So good to see all of you today on this very beautiful day as we've looked forward to such days and hope more come. Welcome also to our online worshipers. Our worship service tonight is going live streamed and also it'll be on the radio and on cable and TV and so we welcome those worshipers. For those that are on the radio especially, I am the one conducting the service and preaching today. Pastor Timothy Miller, and our organist is Mary Warnicky. We also welcome our guests that, who are here. Please know that we are ready to serve you in any way. If you'd like to know more about St. John's and the Word of God that we teach, please be sure to talk to me after the worship service. Or you can get a hold of me through the information that's on the back of the worship folder. All are encouraged to apply God's Word to your everyday life. Also, talk about what you've learned here with your family members and help them apply it and encourage them with the Word of God. Our theme for this evening's service is, Our Minds Are Set on the Things of God. Now, this is the first weekend in our Sharing Our House of Prayer Stewardship Emphasis Series. We're also keeping in mind our theme for the whole school year and church year, which is Witness. They go hand in hand, sharing our house of prayer. We want to share our worship area with all people who want to come, and we want to share Jesus with them. You probably, members, received the initial stewardship emphasis letter uh, this past week. If you didn't, please be sure to let us know. Sharing our house of prayer is a Christ-centered stewardship emphasis. That letter lets you know the presentation times. You need to only attend one of them. There are many of them available. The first ones will be on Wednesday, March 10th, one in the morning at 10 o'clock, and then in the afternoon between our Lenten services, 4.30 and 6 o'clock. See more of the options in the worship folder. In regard to that, it flows that we would show you a video right now in connection with sharing our house of prayer. There are individuals of the congregation who have shared thoughts concerning St. John's, God's Word, and their faith in their Savior. Let's watch the first of these in a series, uh, and the first one is Steve Schultz. Hi, I'm Steve Schultz. Uh, first started here at St. John's in 1971. Uh, went through all of my grade school years here. Uh, now I officially have my girls here. Uh, I was blessed to be able to help coach them. Had a couple of just really great ladies that I was able to help coach with me. Um, but now we're seeing as far as our longevity of the buildings and with COVID and air quality, that there is need to be an investment both in people, as far as teachers, and equipment. Uh, back in the 1970s, when I went to school, we had 42, 45 kids per class. Really, that's too many. Um, you can push it, but I really felt that some kids were left behind even back then. Really need to make a push for the investment. I know it's always spending money, spending money. I farm besides, I know what that's like. But what does your investment bring? It brings these children closer to God, which turns out to be, in the end, getting to heaven. So I guess I'm asking, what is the price that we pay now to the price that can come later on for all souls. We thank Steve Schultz. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart 
and confess our sins to God our Father, asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins and trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray. Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given His only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ, and by His authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In the peace of forgiveness, let us praise the Lord. be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you see that we have no power to defend ourselves. Guard and keep us both outwardly and inwardly from all adversities that may happen to the body and from all evil thoughts that may assault and hurt the soul. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated. Our first lesson is taken from Haggai chapter 1, beginning with verse 1. This serves as the sermon text. In the second year of King Darius, on the first day of the sixth month, the word of the Lord came through the prophet Haggai to Zerubbabel, son of Sheltiel, governor of Judah, and to Joshua, son of Jezadak, the high priest. This is what the Lord Almighty says. These people say, the time has not yet come for the Lord's house to be built. Then the word of the Lord came through the prophet Haggai. Is it a time for you yourselves to be living in your paneled houses while this house remains a ruin? Now this is what the Lord Almighty says. Give careful thought to your ways. You have planted much, but have harvested little. 
You eat, but never have enough. You drink, but never have your fill. You put on clothes, but are not warm. You earn wages only to put them in a purse with holes in it. This is what the Lord Almighty says. Give careful thought to your ways. Go up into the mountains and bring down timber and build the house so that I may take pleasure in it and be honored, says the Lord. You expected much, but see, it turned out to be little. What you brought home, I blew away. Why? declares the Lord Almighty. Because of my house, which remains a ruin, while each of you is busy with his own house. Therefore, because of you, the heavens have withheld their dew and the earth its crops. I called for a drought on the fields and the mountains, on the grain, the new wine, the oil, and whatever the ground produces, on men and cattle, and on the labor of your hands. And this is the word of our Lord. We sing a song where we confess that it is God who saves us. He is the strength of our heart. He is number one in our lives. We sing together Psalm 73, if you're using a hymnal, page 94 in the front. Please stand for the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel is written in the Gospel of St. Mark, the 8th chapter, beginning with verse 31. It is especially from this section that we have our theme for the day, our minds are set on the things of God, for Jesus teaches us here that we are always have to have our minds set on the things of God, but not the things of men. 
He then began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, chief priests, and teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and after three days rise again. He spoke plainly about this, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But when Jesus turned and looked at his disciples, he rebuked Peter. Get behind me, Satan, he said. You do not have in mind the things of God, but the things of men. Then he called the crowd to him along with his disciples and said, If anyone would come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for me and for the gospel will save it. What good is it for a man to gain the whole world, yet forfeit his soul? Or what can a man give in exchange for his soul? If anyone is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, the Son of Man will be ashamed of him when he comes in his Father's glory with the holy angels. And this is the Gospel of our Lord. Please be seated. We continue as we hear the preschoolers sing a few songs, and we appreciate how they are not ashamed of their Savior Jesus, and ashamed they sing out. And their songs include reminding us to praise Him, to love Him, to serve Him, and to thank Him. And then we hear that beautiful, familiar song, Jesus Loves Me, This I Know. After those songs, then we'll go right into the hymn of the day, which is hymn number 355, Take the World, But Give Me Jesus.
Am I hearing that I'm not getting through? There we go. Dear Christian friends, have you ever tried to make sense out of everything in life instead of simply trusting our Lord God for his guidance, his help, and his direction? We are a people that like to make sense of everything. Things just don't make sense, do they? Like, for example, you have a family, and they raise their children well, and yet, why did the son get hooked on heroin? Just doesn't make sense. Somebody does all they can to take care of their health, but yet cancer erupts. Just doesn't seem to make sense. What about child abuse? It doesn't seem to make sense. We could give you all kinds of examples of where we just shake our heads and we think, it just doesn't make sense, but I want it to make sense. What God is teaching us here today is simply to put our trust in Him, to know that He understands and knows everything and that He works everything for the good of His people. He has a plan that He's carrying out for His people. Now we go to the people of Israel. And what it must have felt like when they were carried away into captivity for 70 years in Babylon. Their city assaulted and destroyed. The temple just plundered and in ruins. Their lives pretty much just went up in smoke. And they were dragged away carried away into captivity. Just doesn't make sense. We're the people of God. We're Israel. God's chosen people. How can this happen? They must have been asking that. Trying to make sense. So what about when they came back? After 70 years, they were allowed to come back. And what did they come back to? The gates of the city, the walls of the city, rubble. They came back with their houses trashed. They came back to see the courtyards of the temple where there used to be a throng of people singing, yet now probably overgrown with weeds. And they must have been asking, it just doesn't make sense. When your life seems to fall apart, you ask the Lord, why? Why, Lord? So then they tried to make sense of things. Rolled up their sleeves and they thought, let's get to work. Let's get to work and rebuild the temple. The temple needs to be rebuilt. And so they got to work, but what happened? Well, things got in their way. Their enthusiasm dwindled, and then their priorities changed. Changed to what? Themselves. That's what happened. They began to think about themselves and their own houses. Ah, there's something more important than the house of the Lord. More important than the temple. More important than rebuilding the temple. Our houses need to be fixed up first. We need to make them right. Then we can worry about the temple later. But you know how that goes, right? Later never came. In fact, 15 years went by and still no work on the temple. That's when Haggai comes in. The word of the Lord. Now, the sermon that we have recorded in Scripture by Haggai is one that really calls a spade a spade. It's very blunt. And it reveals the Lord's mind in regard to how they had switched their priorities, how they had made themselves their first priority. This is what it says in our text. Is it a time for you yourselves to be living in your paneled houses while this house, the temple, 
remains a ruin. See, when it comes to giving to the Lord, humanly speaking, it doesn't really make a lot of sense. I'm supposed to give away what I have? See, the Israelites were really preaching a sermon of their own. They were preaching a sermon where those who are most important are themselves. They were preaching a sermon that let's take care of ourselves first. We get the first fruits and then what comes after, what's left over, God will get that. And so the Lord God needed to correct them. And sometimes we need to have that same correction, don't we? Sometimes financial counselors will often quote this quote. Pay yourself first. Pay yourself first. It makes sense, doesn't it, humanly speaking? If you pay yourself first, then you got more for yourself. If you give away, then you have less for yourself. If you give away, then what's going to happen is that there are going to be areas of your life that are going to be harmed because you won't have enough money for this or you won't have enough money for that. But God is saying here clearly, he says, is it a time for you Israelites to be living in your paneled houses while this house, the temple, remains a ruin? Paneled houses. Probably was cedar, wood, paneling as their ceiling and on their walls. It, it was a luxury, though. It was a luxury something that was extremely expensive. And, and they were making sure they were all set for themselves before they were going to give to the Lord. Because humanly speaking, again, doesn't make a lot of sense to give. Doesn't, humanly speaking, according to this world, doesn't make a lot of sense to give it away. According to our sinful nature, the same is true. Our sinful nature wants to be greedy. Our sinful nature wants to be selfish. It wants to keep for ourselves. We call it smart. God calls it sin. We call it something that is good for us. God says it's wrong. For God is to come first. And this comes out even more through Haggai's sermon. Now this is what the Lord Almighty says. Give careful thought to your ways. You have planted much, but have harvested little. You eat, but never have enough. You drink, but never have your fill. You put on clothes, but are not warm. You earn wages, only to put them in a purse with holes in it. You know what that's talking about. The more you get, the more you spend. You never seem to have enough. It's like a hole in the pocket. You just keep spending and spending and spending. The more you get, the more discontent you also become. Because you want more and more, and more is never enough. And it just keeps going on and on. He continues here. He says, you expected much, but see, it turned out to be little. What you brought home, I blew away, God says. Why, declares the Lord Almighty, because of my house, which remains a ruin, while each of you is busy with your own house. Therefore, because of you, the heavens have withheld their dew and the earth its crops. I called for a drought on the fields and the mountains, on the grain, the new wine, the oil, and whatever the ground produces, on men and cattle, and on the labor of your hands. But what God is saying here is that they have less, even though they kept more. How is that possible? It's because the Lord at any time can take away. At any time, he can take away. We might think that we're smart and we can put away and put away and put away. But the Lord, if our priorities are all messed up, the Lord can easily take away. And that's what he did with the Israelites here. 
We need to understand that the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord God, who was able to feed over 5,000 people with a few loaves of bread and a few fish, is certainly also able to take away, to make much into little. And that's what was happening here, because God was upset. Their priorities were mixed up. They were putting themselves in first place and putting the temple of God in last place. And it was left in ruins. Now, we have a wonderful church, don't we? We have a, a wonderful school. Just look at that and you appreciate that very much. And we give thanks to the Lord God. And God wants us to keep these buildings up so that his work can continue. And, and this sharing God's house of worship is part of that. It is to help keep the buildings up and maintained and also to continue this vibrant and aggressive ministry that we do have here at St. John's. It is a wonderful ministry to God's glory as we get the word out to so many people. As I was thinking of this, I also thought of people of the past. Think of this building and you consider all the offerings that were given by people in the past. And, and that took me to the beginning of St. John's, 1852. Almost 170 years ago, God blessed this congregation as it was established. And where did they go and worship? They built their first church on Vine Street. I thought, you know, I, I want to be connected to the history of St. John's, so I'm just going to drive over there and find it and take a look. And sure enough, it's there. And when you look at it, you can see, oh, okay, I can see how that was a church. It's green now. You have uh, on the screen a recent photo, but it was a different color. And then you have the photo from way back when the congregation built that church. And then time went along and the congregation grew and God's people continued to give out of love for their Savior Jesus. And so they built another church in 1865 on this very piece of land right here. And that served well for a good number of years until 1908 when they actually took down the church and built a whole new one. And that's what this one is. And this is what it looked like at that particular time. And then God's people continued to give and to give generously in order to pay for this building. And then they gave so that there could be at the entryway the steps covered. And you can see some other additions as well as you look at the building as it was being repaired, its roof being repaired just a few years ago. Again, offerings being given by God's people. I'm centering right now on the church, but at a different time we'll center on the school and the school's history. And so what do we have? We have such a wonderful blessing today as we look at this building by the grace of God. All by the grace of God. This made a difference in the people that Haggai preached to. It made a big difference. And why did it make such a big difference? It made such a big difference because they came to realize again all the Lord God had done for them. This is what Haggai says. This is what the Lord Almighty says. Give careful thought to your ways. Go up now into the mountains and bring down timber and build my house so that I may take pleasure in it and be honored, says the Lord. Humanly speaking, it doesn't make much sense, does it, to give offerings. But, does it make sense? Oh, absolutely to God's people. Absolutely to those who have faith in their Lord Jesus. Oh, it makes all the sense in the world. It, it's perfect sense. What doesn't make sense is how our Lord God gave himself so for us. Oh, we deserve nothing but hell because of our sin. But the Lord God gave himself, not 10%. He gave all of himself to us. The Lord God stepped from his throne on high into that barn in Bethlehem 
Why? In order to take on human flesh to live and to die for us. That's what he did for us. He came from his throne on high and he came where he couldn't even call a place his home. And there was no place to lay his head, the Bible says. He came and humbled himself all the way to the cross. He gave of himself. How did he pay for your sins? He didn't swipe a visa card. No, he shed his blood so that your sins would be paid for completely. That's our gracious Lord God. There's the motivation for our giving. There's the motivation for putting him first. The Lord God, the Holy One, came and took our place. And the Lord Jesus Christ, that same one who said, I thirst, he's the one who gave us that wonderful gift and the water of baptism together with the word through which we were given that covenant, that promise of forgiveness of sins. He's the one who is the living water that makes it so that our soul never will thirst again. Our Lord Jesus who called out on the cross, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He's the one who has told us that he will now never, never forsake us. That one who taught us to pray, give us this day our daily bread. He's the one who gives us everything that we need. Everything that we have. Our food, our clothing, our shelter. Everything we need for our physical well-being, our spiritual well-being, our eternal well-being. Oh, he gives himself to us. And so we, we open our eyes to see all the blessings that he showers upon us every single day. And then we take time, just like it says in the text. You need to take time to think about it. Take time. Look at your budget. Look at your account. And ask yourself, does this reveal my love for my Savior Jesus? And that's left up to you. That's left up to you. For your heart has been moved by the grace of God. And it's the heart, then, that gives generously as a response to God's gifts and to God's grace. Puts Christ first. He is the ultimate giver, isn't he? And so he empowers us to give. And he has given us his first. The Father, the firstborn, the only begotten Son, he gave him up on the cross. He gave his best. Jesus, the Son of God, who came and took our place. And so we give our best, and we give our first, and we show love to our Lord God. Does, does it make sense to give gifts to our Lord God? Humanly speaking, it doesn't. Oh, but to God's people, to you, to me, by faith in Jesus Christ, it makes perfect sense. Amen. Please stand. The peace of God that surpasses all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Together we sing, Create in me a clean heart, O God. at this time of the worship service that we generally think about giving our offerings to our Lord. And if you brought one, you can place it into the slotted cabinets or the slotted box or drop it off or send it into the church office. Or you can use our communication and giving tool called Realm to give online. If you need any help with that, we certainly will help you. As we pray, 
We celebrate with Jeff and Cindy Bowman at the birth of their new grandson, Abraham John. We also pray for the family of Barb Hankey as the Lord took Barb home to heaven. We go to our Lord in prayer. Dear Lord God, you have blessed our congregation for almost 170 years. To our congregation and the efforts of our members, pastors, teachers, and staff whom you have placed here, we have received the gift of your true word, which is the source of our salvation. By your grace, you enabled families to see the need and importance of building on Jesus' love. Please now give us wisdom, courage, and financial resources to continue to meet the growing needs of our general budget and the large maintenance project in our school. Grant us willing hearts and minds so that we may meet these challenges that lay before us. We ask for your continued guidance and blessings so that we may further our growth in your word, in our faith, and in keeping our school ready to bring our children to learn to love their Savior, Jesus Christ. Dear Father, we praise your holy name for giving to Jeff and Cindy Bowman and their family the gift of a new grandson, Abraham John. Thank you for keeping mom and son safe through childbirth. Continue to keep them in your protection and care. And may our children always be filled with your grace and the Holy Spirit so that they may continue to be a joy and blessing to us and others. Dear Lord God, we turn to you and we praise your holy name for taking Barb to heaven. You promised and so you have fulfilled. May the family and all of us be comforted by the victory over death brought about by your own son's resurrection from the dead. Remind us all of your promises to be with us and to work all for our good. Console and comfort those who grieve and lead them and us to number our days and be prepared through Christ our Savior. In his name we also pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Our worship continues as we sing together hymn number 477, What is the World to Me?
we pray. Almighty God, grant to your church the Holy Spirit and the wisdom that comes from above. Let nothing hinder your word from being freely proclaimed to the joy and edifying of Christ's holy people, so that we may serve you in steadfast faith and confess your name as long as we live. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. standing as we sing hymn number 528 verses 1 and 2 Christ is our cornerstone Before I make some announcements and then we'll be watching two episodes of the Marriage Moments, I'd like to express thanks to our organist, Mrs. Warnicke, and then those that are doing the live streaming and the presenting. I again realized uh, what a blessing they are. You might have wondered why my comment at the beginning of my sermon, it's because they were indicating to me from up in the balcony that I wasn't getting through, and I hope it all went well because after words they gave me the thumbs up so that's what was going on there and I just thought it a good opportunity to thank them we do have a new member another new member who uh, we want to introduce they're not here in person uh, tonight they'll be here tomorrow during the 1030 service but if you do see Jim uh, and his children be sure to welcome them uh, welcome then to Mr. James Acker and his children are Justine and Lincoln. Bible class will be held tomorrow in between services. You're welcome to come back at that time and enjoy Galatians. We're nearing the end under the theme, You Are Free Now. The Bible class for Wednesday, which was to be a presentation of sharing our house of worship, it was going to be on that, uh, is canceled. And that's because of the funeral of Barb Hanke. That'll be at 11 o'clock on Wednesday. So we simply moved that presentation to the next week. It'll be on the 10th, as I had indicated, and is also, I believe, in the worship folder up to date. I do want to uh, impress upon you again the Lenten midweek services, 3.30 and 7 o'clock. 
you're welcome to be there and remember those presentations also in between, uh, but that's on the 10th. Uh, Wednesday at 7 o'clock, at the Lenten service at 7 o'clock, we will have the Luther Prep freshman and sophomore choir here to sing. There are many mission materials yet that you can pick up from our mission festival, uh, and may God bless you all. Let's watch these marriage moments. Hello, and welcome to Marriage Moments. After bringing Adam and Eve together for the very first time, the Bible then says this, For this reason a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. If you want to think of it this way, there are three commitments that are talked about in that verse. Leave united, become one flesh. Do you notice what wasn't mentioned in that verse? The word love. Because you see, the essence of marriage is not love. The essence of marriage is commitment. That both the husband and the wife promise that they will commit to it, that they will be with each other, they will stay with each other, They'll grow in unity with one another. And you know what's cool? When both the husband and the wife really commit to that, real love really grows. And so husbands and wives, make a promise to each other to recommit yourself to each other with everything you have. As you do that, your marriage will be blessed. And that's a moment for your marriage. Hello, and welcome to Marriage Moments. In Genesis 2, verse 24, the Bible says, For this reason a man will leave his father and his mother. First of all, why does it tell the man to leave his father and his mother? Well, it's because that should have been the most important relationship that he should have had up to that point. Now, we humans can make a mess out of things for sure. But in general, the man's relationship to his father and mother should be the most important relationship he has. And God tells him to leave it. No, not abandon it, but to leave it. Why? Because now his wife is to become the most important relationship that he has. It's interesting that God never tells wives to leave their father or mother. He tells husbands. And so husbands, my challenge to you today is to leave. In other words, leave behind whatever is hindering your marriage. Is it your relationship to your father and mother? Refocus that. Is it the way you treat your work responsibilities? Then adjust that. Is it the time you spend with your buddies or a habit or whatever? Whatever it is that is hindering your marriage, leave it behind. And instead, focus on your wife as the most important relationship you have on this earth. As you do that, your marriage will be blessed. And that's a moment for your marriage.